thing And I'll bet you Five dollars That I'll beat you Jack of diamonds, I know you of old. You robbed my poor pocket of my silver and my gold. Oh, the cuckoo, she's a pretty bird, and she warbles as she flies, but she never hollers cuckoo. Till the fourth day of July ago that uh, my wife and I went to West Virginia and uh, we were wanting to take charge of our lives. We uh, felt like that uh, we were in a rat race. You know, we just, we wanted to drop out of the rat race and uh, live more simply. We wanted to raise our own food. We wanted to live on the land, and, and we had decided that West Virginia would be the place to do that because it was cheap land, and uh, there were people there who had been uh, practicing survival skills for several hundred years, people farming with horses, people uh, doctoring with herbs and plants right out of the woods, people planting by the signs of the moon. Uh, we went to Lincoln County, West Virginia. Now, Lincoln County at that time was the poorest county in West Virginia. Uh, the only heavy industry in Lincoln County was a bra factory. <laughs> over at, uh, Hamlin, and uh, there weren't many jobs to be had, but we weren't looking for jobs. We wanted to, to farm, and we found a, a, a little farm that we could rent. 60 acres, had free natural gas, big old farmhouse, outbuildings, uh, running water in the front yard. Uh, we got our water out of a spring in the outhouse out back. And uh, we paid $25 a month. And uh, the neighbors hinted that uh, we were being gouged <laughs> paying those prices. <laughs> Deep, rich, fertile soil. We grew such good gardens there. Um, we were pretty green. We didn't know much about, uh, about uh, farming. And, and we had wonderful neighbors uh, just up the hill from us lived Henry Baker and Anna Baker. And uh, they kind of took us under their wing and uh, taught us how to, how, to, how to plant by the signs of the moon. You know, what uh, varieties of, of, of vegetables to grow. And of course, they had varieties that had been in their families for hundreds of years. Things like bloody, bloody butcher corn. <laughs> this was a, a kind of corn that was was mostly white, but it would have have blood red splotches that ran through it. Ears of corn as long as your forearm, grow twelve foot tall, and uh, and all kinds of wonderful uh, varieties. But uh, they shared with us and taught us how to how to how to grow a good garden. Henry Baker taught me how 
to farm with horses. Uh, taught me how to harness up a, a, a horse and how to plow with a double shovel uh, plow. How to use a Vulcan hillside plow. The Vulcan hillside plow, uh, because much of the, of the land there is on the hillside, you plow across, you get to the other end, and you've got a little latch that releases the mold board, kicks it over on the other side, and you plow back the other way, and it keeps turning the furrow in the right direction. Henry and Anna were wonderful neighbors. Henry was a big old tall, six and a half foot hillbilly, short red hair, missing a tooth right there. He sat down at the sawmill. He had gotten in a disagreement, and a fella had knocked it out with a tooth before. Uh, Henry... <coughs> had been a moonshiner of some renown in his youth. And uh, uh, Henry had gotten caught making moonshine, spent two years in Moundsville at the state prison. He didn't make moonshine anymore, but he still loved it. His wife, Anna, was a lovely little Czechoslovakian. In her youth, she had been a member of a uh, circus family the Flying Trishkas. They, they, they were a trapeze act which traveled all over the world. Now, Anna had eight children, and with each successive child, she retained a few more pounds, and her husband thought she was a liability, so he divorced her and, and got a skinny old wife. And, and she got left in Florida. Somehow she... Through wonderful experiences, she found her way to West Virginia and married Henry Baker, and they had a, a, a wonderful existence up a holler, Little Laurel Creek. They were our neighbors. Anna knew all about doctoring with herbs, and and she uh, could tell us if you were if you were sick, how to make a poultice out of uh, out of onions and put it on your chest, and and uh, she she was a a great little gal. Uh, if you went down the holler and up a little side holler, Lawrence Goldsmith and his wife were our neighbor. Lawrence had been a, a uh, social worker in Chicago when he decided he wanted to get out of the rat race. Lawrence uh, was the type of fella, he was of a scientific bent. He had ordered realty catalogs from all over the country. He studied rainfall charts and high and low temperatures and he came to the same conclusion that I did that West Virginia would be a good place to live. But Lawrence was one of those fellas that did things kind of bass backwards. And uh, <coughs> he wanted to build a little cabin to use for a shop. He didn't want to harm any living trees. Now, in West Virginia, it's not like it is here. Uh, there are an abundance of living trees. And if you leave a bare piece of ground and go back to the house to get a drink, you come back, and there are six-inch poplars growing. Uh, but Lawrence did not want to harm any of the living trees on his acreage. Uh, so he got dead, rotten logs off the forest floor and drug them down and made himself a little cabin which he, for a foundation, he used uh, stones which he stacked one on top of another without benefit of mortar. And uh, the first wind that came along blew his cabin over. <laughs> Everything Lawrence did was like this. I went over one day, Lawrence is cutting firewood with a chainsaw. Smoke is billowing up. I said, Lawrence, something's not right here. I look at his chainsaw and he's got the chain on right there. <laughs> well... <laughs> What I wanted to tell you about. One day Lawrence is out in the forest and he fancied himself a great uh, harvester of, of wild, edible plants. He came home with half a bushel basket of chanterelle mushrooms. Except. Except. <laughs> They were false chanterelles. Now, they look a lot like the real thing. False chanterelles will not kill you. 
But they'll make you wish you were dead for, for quite a while. Now, uh, Lawrence had prepared uh, this elegant uh, Italian pasta dinner and invited Henry and Anna over. And uh, Henry and Anna had had this meal with them. And on the walk home from Lawrence's, they realized that something was not quite right. And they got home just in time to stand side by side, throwing up over their porch rail. Oh and uh, they were in severe gastric discomfort. And, uh, they both felt the call for the outhouse about the same time. Now, Henry and Anna had just a modest one-holer outhouse. It was not like the outhouses down at the Mid-Kill Baptist Church which had three holes, uh, or they would have been okay. Uh, but Anna beat Henry to the outhouse. Now, Henry decided that he would just step down the hill and borrow my outhouse, which was perfectly all right. By this time, uh, we were already in bed and sound asleep, and, and uh, it would have been all right under any circumstances, but... Uh, there were a couple of things that Henry did not know. The first thing <laughs> was that uh, Sue's mother was coming for a visit. And uh, Sue's mother had never even seen an outhouse, let alone used one. And we had been desperately trying to prepare for her visit. Uh, cleaning up this uh, uh country house and trying to get ready and I had looked at that outhouse and thought what can I do to make it acceptable to her mother and I had gone to town and I had bought a new unfinished oak toilet seat and I had brought it out and I had sanded that thing until it was nice and smooth and I would given it a couple of heavy coats of spar varnish and installed it in the outhouse. Now, in the <coughs> high humidity of West Virginia, sometimes varnish takes a while to die. 